people find a place in a church that often seems like their enemy? Should church officials fire LGBT employees for entering into same-sex marriages? Those are some topics covered in my new book, Building a Bridge. The Catholic Church has an obligation to welcome LGBT people, to show that they're beloved children of God, to celebrate their gifts, to listen to them, to accompany them, and to suffer with and even for them. Why? Because they're human beings. They're Catholics too. They've been baptized, and so they're as much a part of the church as me, their local bishop, or the Pope. And recently there have been more signs of that acceptance. Pope Francis's most famous phrase may be, who am I to judge? But we need not go far to look for other signs of welcome. The Catechism of the Catholic Church calls for us to treat LGBT people with respect, compassion, and sensitivity. Those virtues can also help the LGBT community as it interacts with the church. More basically, Jesus, in his public ministry, was always trying to include people and made a point of specifically reaching out to people who felt marginalized. Because for Jesus, there was no one who was other. For Jesus, there is no us and them. There is only us. Building a bridge, however, is about more than an invitation to welcome. It also offers practical spiritual resources for LGBT Catholics, their families, and their friends. The book includes selected Bible passages, as well as meditations and reflection questions to help LGBT Catholics with their relationship to God, their church, and their own self-understanding, and to help their families and friends too. Because ministering to LGBT Catholics is not just about the LGBT person, but their parents, grandparents, brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles, as well as their friends, co-workers, neighbors, and fellow parishioners, all who care about the spiritual life and welfare of LGBT people. So I hope that building a bridge can help not only the LGBT person, and not only the Catholic Church, but 